how Satoshi Nakamoto solved the double spending problem. The belief that an endless number of a given digital currency can be generated or that a person may spend the same coin again and again undermining the currency are both incorrect. But these assumptions would have been valid before Satoshi Nakamoto's work on creating Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto addressed several challenges surrounding digital currencies, one of which is the double spending problem. This is perhaps one of the most significant technological breakthroughs of all time. Now, you might wonder, what am I talking about? Welcome to Crypto Skills, the channel that makes all the complicated crypto topics easy to understand. In this video, I'll give you the simplest explanation of how Satoshi Nakamoto solved the double spending problem. By the end of this video, you'll have a pretty good overview of this revolutionary technology that makes crypto what it is today. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Double spending has always been one of the biggest concerns for currency makers. What does that mean exactly? Well, many cultures throughout the world have employed precious metals and paper-based fiat currencies as a medium of exchange throughout history. The money that you have in your pocket, also known as fiat money, is a form of currency that is not backed by any physical asset such as gold or silver and is usually proclaimed legal tender by the government. Now, the thing that we take for granted with such currencies is that you can't spend the same currency twice. That may sound obvious, but trust me, understanding this is fundamental for understanding how currencies, and more specifically, cryptocurrencies work. Let's illustrate this with an example. A person cannot spend a dollar for an apple and then use the same dollar to buy an orange, unless you physically steal the money. This is because the dollar is returned to the merchant when the apple is purchased. This is true with other assets too. Say you are selling your house. What stops you from selling your house twice to two different people? The government records. Once you sell your house, even if it is not physically given to the buyer, there are records maintained by some entity like the government that prevents you from selling the same house again. However, where cryptocurrencies are concerned, there is no true fiscal relinquishment of money. Also, there are no intermediaries to oversee the transaction. Therefore, there is a risk that someone will be able to copy the transaction details and the same currency is spent twice, resulting in the so-called double spending risk. Throughout history, there have been many attempts at creating digital currencies, but Satoshi Nakamoto an anonymous person or a group of people is regarded to be a pioneer in cryptocurrency for solving this double spending problem. He came up with a novel way to avoid double spending. Satoshi Nakamoto released a white paper for Bitcoin in the year 2008, which outlined how, currently, we trust third parties like banks to prevent double spending in digital financial transactions. But his Bitcoin didn't require any third party to prevent double spending. Let's see how he designed this to make sure that double spending is next to impossible. If you have followed this channel, you should by now know what a blockchain is. If not, check out this video. At the most basic level, it's simply a record keeping mechanism, like a Google Drive for example. The structure of blockchain is, however, a little different. The data in the blockchain is stored in the blocks, which are linked to each other forming a chain of blocks. So the blockchain alone isn't enough to solve a double spending problem. If someone alters a blockchain network by adding a block that gives him back his crypto, he can spend it twice. The reason why people can't do that is because of what's called a consensus mechanism. In simple terms, it means that people or computers on the network, in this case, must agree on what's going on in the network. For a transaction to become genuine, and be uploaded to the blockchain, they must be independently authenticated by miners. This is ensured by the proof of work consensus mechanism. Mining is used by Bitcoin and several other cryptocurrencies to secure transactions. In return, miners are given a set amount of Bitcoin as an incentive for successfully verifying transactions. This process eliminates the need for third parties like banks to ensure that there's no double spending. Every day, 
thousands of computer systems monitor the Bitcoin blockchain to ensure that double spending does not occur. If someone tries to spend the same Bitcoins twice by creating two different transactions with the same Bitcoin input, the two transactions will never be verified. This effectively invalidates a second transaction and causes it to be cancelled. In a more technical sense, let's say you have one Bitcoin and you want to spend it in two different transactions simultaneously. You may try this by transferring the same amount of Bitcoin to two different Bitcoin wallets. Both of these transactions will subsequently be added to the unconfirmed transaction queue. The confirmation method would approve the initial transaction, which would then be validated in the next block. The confirmation procedure, on the other hand, would flag the second transaction as invalid and would not be verified. As proof of how effective the solution is, there isn't any recorded instance of double spending since Bitcoin was introduced. The cryptocurrency community believes that all double spending has been thwarted. But hold on a second. Before we get carried away, let me clarify that double spending remains a risk. Although very improbable, it is not impossible. There are actually three types of attack that in theory could cause double spending. First, Finney attack. This attack is named after Hal Finney. Hal Finney was one of the early Bitcoin contributors and the first person ever to receive Bitcoin from the creator Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Finney explained that a double spending attack could happen in three steps. First, the attacker performs a transaction in which he sends his coin to an address under his control. Once this action is performed, it begins mining a valid block in which the given transaction is included. Second, the attacker includes the transaction in the block, but does not transmit it to the network. Instead, he purchases with the same number of coins that he used in the first transaction. Thus, he seeks to make the payment of some good or service with the same amount of money. Third, after making the transaction to the merchant, and the merchant accepting it without confirmation, the attacker transmits the mined block to the network. This action causes the network to accept the block as valid while invalidating the transaction made to the merchant. Although it seems simple enough, this is the rarest of the rarest scenario. That is because it requires two things. One, the attacker needs to be the miner of the block where his own transaction is being validated. For this, the hashing power of the attacker needs to be massive. The lower the hashing power, the lower the chances are that he will be the miner. And two, a merchant needs to accept a transaction with zero confirmations from the network. The second transaction that the attacker conducted with the merchant was unconfirmed. And it is unlikely that such a transaction will be accepted and the merchant will provide his goods or services until it is confirmed. Second, race attack. Race attacks are simply a race between two transactions that have been broadcast at near identical times. Firstly, a merchant is paid with the crypto existing in the wallet, but immediately the second transaction is initiated where the attacker transfers the same crypto to his other wallet. The trick here is to replace the first transaction with the second transaction before the first transaction is processed on the blockchain. But how is the second transaction preferred over the first transaction? Well, by adding more fees to the second transaction. Usually, the higher the fees, the faster the transaction is processed. Since the second transaction has more fees, miners have an incentive to process it first. And then, the first transaction, when processed, is invalidated since there was no crypto in the wallet. This attack also only works if the merchant accepts the unconfirmed transaction. That is, it sells you goods or services before the transaction is validated by the blockchain. Third, 51% attack. This attack is possibly the most difficult, but still the most straightforward attack of all. It simply involves using the power of blockchain against itself. The blockchain is a democratized version of the existing internet, and the power of democracy lies in the majority. However, this isn't necessarily a good thing. The majority of people can change things for the worse for all the people. This is called a 51% attack. If 51% of the blockchain is controlled by a person or a group of people, they can undermine the entire blockchain for all the users and manipulate it for their benefit. They can double spend the coins, steal funds, prevent other transactions and restrict other users to make changes. 
But don't worry, that isn't easy, especially with the established blockchains like Bitcoin. The Bitcoin network is huge and is spread across the world. A 51% attack on such a network is improbable to occur. Now, as a general rule of safeguarding against becoming a victim of double spending attack, if you are accepting payments in the crypto, it is always important to make sure that your transaction is confirmed by the blockchain before you sell goods or services to someone. On a final note, if Satoshi Nakamoto hadn't used blockchain technology and consensus mechanism to address the double spending problem, cryptocurrencies would never have gained a foothold. The double spending risk is now minuscule and near impossible in established blockchains like Bitcoin. And that's all for this video. If you want to learn more about the basics of crypto, check out this video where I explain what DeFi is. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your appreciation for our efforts. And consider subscribing so you don't miss our next bite-sized explainer video on crypto. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.